Yeah. Time to bring on the chaser. No! <laughs> Here he comes, it's the custard cream king himself, mastermind champ and legal eagle. It's the dark sauce, Sean Wallace. Actually, it's one and one and a half custard creams, cos uh, two would have been too exciting. That sugar rush you get. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Hello, Elias. Hello. Do you like acting, do you? I'd like to give it a go, yeah. And that's good, cos today you'll be playing the part of first contestant court. Mm, well, <laughs> we see. Let's put some money on the table. Six grand, low offer of, please. That's why you're far too good for this. £600. OK, high offer of... You can definitely do this. Twenty. Twenty thousand pounds. Brilliant. Have a chat with the team. There you go, Ruth. Really good strong start there, Elias. You can definitely get the six. I don't know if you want to go for the 20, but it'd be good to get some money back here with the six. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Really strong start. Very impressive. I would stick with the six, but if you feel bold, go for the 20. Pete. Okay. Very strong start. You're clearly a bright boy. Get it in the bank and then come back and help us in the final. Yeah, okay. I think that all that sort of the pub quizzing and stuff you do, I think that helps. So, yeah. you know, young players that go along to pub quizzes, they, they just soak up so much info. It's brilliant. Yeah. 600, six grand, 20 grand. What'll it be? I think I'm going to stick to what I've earned. Yeah. yeah. Stick with the six grand, hopefully get a good start for the team and sure. then we'll go from there. 6,000 it is, Chaser. You're a dangerous player, uh, Elias. Youth with your knowledge, you've got to go, mate. <laughs> well, we shall see. Now, Elias, for six grand, the chase is on. Well, here comes your first question. Which of these areas of London does not feature in the song Oranges and Lemons? A, Shoreditch, B, Soho, C, Stepney. You've put Soho. I, I know it's got something to do with St Clements, but, yeah, I'm re I really don't know. Correct answer is... It's great. Step close to home, well played. Right. Chase has put... Goes right so high, comes onto the table. Here's your next question. The yellow bird of paradise flower, Kirsten Bosch Gold, was renamed in the 1990s in honour of which politician? A. Ronald Reagan. B. Nelson Mandela. C. Margaret Thatcher. You've put Nelson Mandela. Yeah. He yeah. seems quite an honourable guy, so. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. About time's about right, don't you? Early 90s. Yeah. Correct answer is. Well played, step close to home, Chase has put. Goes with Nelson Mandela as well. Yeah, I mean, Margaret Thatcher has deposed in 1990. Ronald Reagan's presidency finished in 1989, so by process of logic and elimination, it was Sir Nelson Mandela. Here's your next question. Thank you. <sighs> Established in 1725, Madrid's Sobrino de Potin is the world's oldest what? A bookshop, B hairdressers, C restaurant. You've put restaurant. Well, I guess it wouldn't be bookshop because Spanish for book is think like biblio or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Correct answer is. Well played, step close at home. Chase has put, good player. Goes right. Bring in your calm logic, he's a very good player. Here's your next question <sighs> What vehicles race round a scale electric track? A, planes, B, trains, C, automobiles. What sort of a question is that? You've put... Automobiles. What would it be? Why would it be planes? My parents, over the years, <laughs> bought me absolutely loads of them. I bet. I never played them, but I just knew there was something to do with cars. So, I know. Yeah. Well, what vehicles race round a scale electric track? Track? Why would you put planes? Why would it be planes? Correct answer is... I thought it was trains. <laughs> <laughs> Step close to home, well done, Chase has put. Close right, automobiles. I think the question's trying to have a play on the film, planes, trains and automobiles. Uh, no. no. Kidding. It's not his pretty face, that one, is he? Well, what about that? <laughs> <laughs> and there's me not getting it. <laughs> right, one more, we're home and dry. Now then, young man, get this right, and you'd have had two goals at 20 grand. Yeah, you're a good player, Elias. Here's your question, good luck. How long after the execution of Anne Boleyn did Henry VIII marry Jane Seymour? A, 11 days, B, 11 months, C, 11 years. <laughs> He's going to be all over this, so you've got to know your history. Yeah. You've put... 11 days. I had in my head that Anne Boleyn kind of had her head removed very yeah. quickly um, so that Henry VIII could marry Jane Seymour, so 11 days was the shortest. OK, uh, to go through with six grand, correct answer is... 
well played. Nice. Why didn't he just get divorced? Because uh, she was uh, executed on uh, trumped-up charges of adultery. So she was beheaded on the 19th of May, 1536, and he married Jane Seymour on the 30th of May. So he goes and marries Jane Seymour, mm -hmm. right, who's married to one of the Keach brothers. No, she wasn't married at all. What are you talking about? <laughs> Dr Quinn, medicine woman, yes. I'm telling you. <laughs> Have no fear of that. I know, I've seen it on the telly. <laughs> Where does that leave us? <laughs> <laughs> the last year, through to the final Thank chase. Well Just done, mate. Well Congratulations. Done,